Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and welcome to your first Digital Rebar training lab. This is Lab 1000, where we go through how to install Digital Rebar. In this lab, we are going to cover two different ways to install Digital Rebar. The first is going to be in the cloud, and we will talk about that first. It'll take about five minutes. The second is to be able to do it on Metal and Pixie. And that takes a little bit more time, and so we've put it second in the video. You only need to do one of the two options, and if you are only interested in bare metal pixie, jump ahead to that section. Otherwise, the cloud install is quick and easy, and I know you'll have a good time learning about digital rebar and taking our follow-on quick tutorial labs and learning more about orchestration, provisioning, and configuration. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start our digital rebar install journey. The journey starts for Lab 1000 at portal.rackend.io, where you'll see our basic portal and the initial lab setup. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see that the install process offers instructions for Cloud or VM, which we're following, Terraform, if you're used to that, you can skip through multiple steps here, or the Pixie bare metal local install options, which are detailed in the second half of this video. For now, we're going to go through this process and set up a machine in Amazon with the correct port access, and then SSH to it. So let's get to that. Here is my AWS EC2 console, and I'm going to select to launch an instance. I'm going to name this Lab1000, because that's the machine that we're building. Amazon Linux is great. You could also use Red Hat, Ubuntu, CentOS, Rocky, Alma, uh, whatever is interesting to you in a standard uh, architecture. We're going to go ahead and boost the RAM a little bit on this and get 4 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM. I'm going to want my keypad on this, my uh, key pair on this, and we already have a security group set up for Digital Rebar server that includes 8090, 8091, and 8092 and SSH as uh, allowed security groups. All are necessary for these trials to work uh, sufficiently, but in production or more serious deployments can easily be cranked down or limited based on your VPC. And we're just going to use a little bit of storage right out of the box. I don't need to make any changes to advanced details, but I want to scroll down and show you that the install process that we're going to follow next could actually be done in user data by simply pasting in the values here. And then from that, I would be able to uh, skip the next install process. For the purpose of this video, I actually want to walk you through that. We're going to let the instance launch and build our system. Once the machine is up, we should be able to SSH right in and see how things are going. Let's check our instance ID. And this is our IP address over here. We're going to SSH right in, SSH EC2 user for Amazon, 3590115146. Excellent. So we now have access to the system for our install. Jumping back to our install instructions, you can see that we're over here in the install digital rebar area. And there's some additional flags that we're going to include in this install process. Normally, if you don't have one of these clouds, you're going to follow this process where we provide the value and then the install sequence. And of course, you can cut and paste these directly into your browser like I'm going to do. And if you pick up one from the cloud, that value of the public IP address is uh, determined using the meta API for those systems. We're basically going to log in and run that command. Bring back my SSH window. I'm just going to simply paste in, and you'll see here's the value. And I've added version tip in here to pull in the latest code for digital rebar. Um, for this install, most installs, you'll want to start with the stable uh, version of the install. There's other things that you could add to set the default user, default password, or identify your endpoint. Um, those are good options uh, for more advanced users. In this case, we're going to run through the install, and it's going to go through the basics very quickly. And from that perspective, all we're doing now is waiting for Digital Rebar to start. Once it starts, the install script is going to automatically take it through the bootstrapping or initiate the bootstrapping process. This minimal set of work is actually given to Digital Rebar as it's running now, and it will finish the install live. So let's go ahead and give that a try. 
Over here, we're going to come back to our instance details, grab the public IP address, which should be available, and just put that right in here, our digital rebar address. It's going to start me up directly into the login browser. I do have to verify the self-signed certificate. You can provide your own certificates uh, during the install process, and that's perfectly fine. But here, I just let it go. And then Rocket Skates and Rocket Skates uh, is the password. So if uh, you can just log in here, obviously, Changing that is important. Uh, we don't want you to have any system that has the default password set with a public address. Uh, fill out this simple information. I've already done this work, so I can go ahead and upload my existing license. Go ahead and pull that out of the file. Upload that. And here you'll notice that even with this license, I'm going to have to add it into the system. It's giving me a very clear warning, and I can go ahead and check an update, and it will uh, bring everything in my license up to date. So if you're doing multiple trials, you can use your license multiple times, and we, we recommend doing that. And from here, we have a working digital rebar system. I can go ahead and change my default password, so it's not rocket skates. Always a great idea right from the start. Excellent. And so then, jumping back to info and preferences, I can literally watch as the system goes through its bootstrapping process. Another thing that we recommend is uploading your SSH key. I'm going to go ahead and do that also. Uh, I have it. And now my system is ready to go. If I check into my uh, self runner, this is the digital rebar's own agent running on the system that we use for provisioning. It's already completed the systems. These are very fast uh, machines. There's a bit of downloading that gets done. I can click over here and see all of the jobs that were run to bootstrap the system. You can see this is our universal bootstrap and I can page back through and see exactly what was done on my behalf. If I jump down uh, to one of these steps, bootstrap in context, for example, uh, you can see the exact uh, work that was done uh, to get everything up and running. And at this point, the bootstrapping wizard is basically telling me I have everything I need to go and setting you up to do the next labs in the sequence, which is lab 1010. If you're just doing the cloud installs, this is the end of the video. If you're looking to also see how we provision in VMs and Pixie Boot, stay tuned in this video uh, and learn how to do that also. And to get back to the lab, you don't have to log out of the system. Just click the Friendly Labs button. You can reopen your lab. When you're done, just mark it complete and move on to the next lab. Hello. Welcome to the Pixie Booting part of Lab 1000. In this lab, we're going to show you how to build a digital rebar in a VM using VirtualBox so that you can test Pixie booting and other OS provisioning capabilities. For this, you'll be following our quick start guide that lays out exactly how to do this. I've already downloaded a CentOS Stream OS and set it up as a new machine, updated it, and patched it. What that means is that I now have enough RAM and processor capability for the demo. And then I've set up my first adapter as my host-only network adapter, and my second as my NAT. That will give me easy access for my local machine for Pixie and provisioning, and then internet access from the host so I can download all my requirements. On the machine itself, looking at the network, that means I've gone ahead and created a static IP address, 192.168.56.10. I turned off the DHCP server on that host-only network adapter. And then I let this second adapter be a DHCP server and give me internet access. For this install, we're going to be scrolling down and following the exact same install process that we're used to using on the other systems. This install script and then using Universal Installer. So if I come back here and SSH into that server, CentOS is the login user provided in that image. And then I need to become root. Excellent. So now I'm ready to do the install. I just need to take this uh, curl command over here and paste it into my browser. I'm going to add two additional steps. I'm going to add then the IP address of the system just to make sure that we bind to the correct address. I have some choices with this, and this is just going to make sure that I'm, I'm listing in the right place. And I'm also going to say, because uh, I'm using, I want to use the very latest code, I'm going to say version tip. If you're doing a regular trial, just leave this blank and use the stable version. It's going to go ahead and do the download install. 
and immediately come back and tell me that I have a port in use. One of the things that we've seen with these standard images is that they have turned on libvert. And I actually need to go ahead and disable that. So I can do that just by doing system cuddle, disabling uh, libvert, disable now, that looks great. And I still need to pkill DNS mask to make the system ready for the install. What that's doing is turning off the DHCP server that, is it, that libvert is managing. And if you want, you can also go into the libvert configuration and tell it to stop asking for DHCP. In this case, we're doing a quick demo, and I'm assuming you just want to be able to get right past it and make things work. It's handy that the install script does this check for you. So the risk of running into a system in which you already have a DHCP server running and having digital rebar then conflict with that is greatly diminished because we're going to check that for you. And now we're just running through the normal digital rebar install. It's going to go through the normal process and set the system up. That's going to include doing the automated bootstrapping that's in the system. And I will show you what that looks like as it goes. Uh, that bootstrapping is going to install Podman or Docker, it's going to uh, download contacts, it's going to set up boot environments, basically get the environment ready to go. As you can see, we're already doing API calls and provisioning the system. So Digital Rebar is running on this uh, endpoint, on this host. And I can go there simply by going to that address, 192.168.56.10, port 8092 is the API port. And in this case, it looks like I have neglected to turn off the firewall. So let's let this finish the install, and I'll show you how to turn off the firewall. Now that the system's up, all I have to do to turn off the firewall is system cuddle stop firewall D if I'm having a firewall problem on a CentOS system. And if I don't want this to come back, I can disable that also. Excellent. Come back over here and you'll notice that now it's already trying to connect. Because we're doing a self-signed certificate, I have to accept that certificate. That looks excellent. And we're going to be able to log in with our default password, Rocket Skates. Rocket Skates, if you forget that, you can always hover over here and see it. And this is going to take us right into our, to our login. Now the first thing that you're going to be expected to do is register this trial. Provide your name. We're not going to spam you or um, bug you with a whole bunch of stuff. This is really a self-paced trial. Uh, if you've done this before, like I have several times, I can just upload my license file uh, from my system, click upload here, and go. I would recommend that you do download the trial, and now you can see that you, we are now in the bootstrapping process. This is perfectly normal. If I take a license that I've already done, it's going to ask me to add this new endpoint, so I can just check the license and add in and register my new endpoint. That looks great. And if I come back to machines, what you'll notice is our system is going through the bootstrapping process for us. Uh, I can go and check and see what's going on here. And it's downloading ISOs right now to make sure I can do the boot provisioning that I want to do. And as it goes forward, it will complete all of the checkbox items uh, down through up until uploading my SSH key and, of course, changing my default password. always recommend you go through and, and do that. In a VM, it's not as important, but it is a good idea to reset your password to something that is not the default. And uh, to upload my SSH key, all I have to do here is choose my SSH key, and then I can go ahead and get my uh, public key. There we go. Handily have it right here and upload that key. And you'll see, as we've been working in the background, it's literally going through and doing all of the bootstrapping tasks for me. The one thing that I have to do in a virtual environment that I, the system can't do for me is set up my provisioning subnets. And here I just have to go to say create. You'll notice here is the different uh, subnets that I have. Uh, this is the one I want to use, this 192.168.56.10. That is my host network. I'm just going to go ahead and say use that. It's going to fill in all of the defaults for me uh, just like I wanted. That looks fantastic. I'm going to hit save here. And now I'm ready to start actually doing boot provisioning of VMs. Uh, actually, I'm not until all of the steps uh, complete. You'll notice they have completed. That looks great. 
uh, to provision machines, I'm going to go ahead into VirtualBox, uh, pick, create a new machine here. And for that one, I just need some basic RAM processors, can be pretty minimal. And go ahead and pick the host only adapter. I don't need additional adapters. And then when I say start here, that machine is going to go ahead and start uh, doing that Pixie provision. Uh, Digital Rebar, which is already set up, is going to uh, send it the discovery image and start the process. You can see Sledgehammer is already going through here, and I'm getting my first boot provisioning operation. So if I move some things out of the way, we should be able to see that machine register in just a second as it's discovered by Digital Rebar. And you'll see it show up in the list of machines for me automatically. So there we go. The machine that I booted uh, has already registered and it's going to go through the universal discovery pipeline, which means it's going to get inventoried and analyzed and all of the other components of a standard machine pipeline. And we can actually see that working its way through. Address came in. Um, a lot of fun to actually watch this process go through and see all of the systems and information that's getting uh, captured about this machine as we go through this standard process. My next recommendation for you after you've done this very basic setup is continue down the RackN Labs. Uh, we have provided a lot of hands-on material so that you can learn how to do alarms, alerts, triggers, blueprints, orchestration, and other work. Um, one thing you'll notice here, uh, this is perfectly normal. My CentOS repos would require internet connection in order for that to get resolved, and I'm going to need to disable that. It's actually in the documentation for this task on how to um, resolve that question. So notice we're installing without access. We have to set package repositories to nothing. Easy enough to do. I'm going to go and do it for you right now. Global. Just have to come in and add a parameter here. Package repositories. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there we don't have access to. So let's just remove all of it. Set it to an empty string. Great. That looks fantastic. Let's go back to the machine. And here, just have to hit run. Notice it picked up right through that. And now we are back in business with a uh, system that's not connected to the internet. If I do want uh, to be able to download those package repositories, I just need to set up my host as a gateway, which is a step um, I haven't done. And then I have to make sure that the subnet definition that I have includes that machine as a gateway, which I didn't have it do. All of these things are in the docs, um, or if you have questions, reach out to us. We'd love to interact with people in, in the community through Slack. Uh, we want you to be successful and learn how to do this. That's why we've invested so much time in some really fantastic education materials. Have a great experience with Digital Rebar, and I will see you at Lab 1010.